BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Have you considered renting a car to take that family trip versus using your own car? According to AAA, it costs 50 cents per mile to operate a car. If you are planning a long trip, renting may be the better option. If you do rent a car before you take your trip, check with your auto insurer and credit card issuer to see what coverage they provide. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Bundle multiple policies for savings of up to 45% on your farmer's auto insurance. It's like a buffet without the regret. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available with select Farmers branded policies. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers, Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges, Farmers New World Life Insurance Company, or affiliate. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. Nine point nine K I S W the Rock of Seattle. A lot of you have been drinking that Starbucks Frappuccino that you get, you know, when you buy the store. Oh yeah, yeah, the gas station store. I always pull, one, grab one of those when I need one. Guess what, Steve? What's up? Looks like you may not be drinking it right. I drink it out of the hole. <laughs> yeah, you do. I didn't know you had to actually be going to, uh, <laughs> go to your hovel. Uh, your, 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 oh, your hovel hole? Yeah, it's hovel <laughs> hole. I didn't know you had to go there to drink it. But No, I open the uh, lid. There's a giant hole. I put my mouth on it and just let the liquid go in. Hmm. Are we talking about That's this? the instructions on the back about, of the Frappuccino. It says it right there. Well, drink through the hole. Apparently, the thing is this, man. Somebody went on TikTok and has changed the Frappuccino <laughs> world. Um, looks like uh, there's an easy way to make this look like the kind you get, the, the Frappuccinos at Starbucks. Apparently, what you're supposed to do is take this. Don't drink it right away. You're supposed to put it in the freezer, okay. shake it up. Then you got some slushy action. So I saw on TikTok that you're actually supposed to put this into the freezer for it to turn into a Frappuccino. So I went to buy it to test it out. And I'm actually kind of scared because I don't want the glass to crack, but we're going to try it anyways. So it's been in my freezer for a couple of hours, and I'm going to see if it actually worked. So it's still liquid, but apparently you're supposed to shake it. Oh my gosh, this is actually so cool. Science. See, <laughs> you know what? That woman is somebody's dream, because that's, that's all it takes for her to have a good day. Science! Science! I like the like Starbucks had to say that. A few people that work at Starbucks like, yeah, we had no idea that, that actually works because you don't want to like say, yo, everyone, throw your glass into a freezer and hopefully you don't forget it before it explodes. Oh yeah, there is that. Right. Yeah, that, I forgot about that part of it. Yeah. Set a timer, kids. That's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> we we we've all had our our our, our soda explosions because oh, of dude, leaving yeah. in there too long. That is pretty cool though. Yeah, so that's, that's a nice frap hack for you right there. Frap hack. Yeah. Frap hack. Frap. Hack, I mean, and dude, we're going to get to a point where someone's going to put out a book on all the silly Starbucks hacks from like the ridiculous drinks that people. Yeah. Like, oh, you get the fruity rainbow drink or the 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 happy dragon on acid drink, and they've got to do this because it's the perfect coffee table book. <sighs> Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. You know, I was going to say it'd be a great coffee table book, not realizing that there was a pun in there. Did you really? Yeah, I was thinking in my head this would be a really fun coffee table book. Oh wow! But you're right. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, if wow. you had just done it, I would have given you so much more credit, right? right? Yeah, I would have said, "Wow, that Steve's getting cleverer and cleverer." And then I hear if you put the coffee table book in the freezer, oh, you're an idiot. That's you're you're, you're you're hacking the hack. You're just an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, listen. I don't know if you've seen this video spreading online. This is another way to make your day. It's a dad failing miserably in front of his daughter. Uh, he was giving his daughter a lesson on how to drive a three wheeler. But then crashed his own three wheeler before he could even get on the seat. Here we go, baby. Let's go. Let's get on the ride. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, that's so All awesome. Right. <laughs> the video's the best. No more of that one. <laughs> no more of that one. Yeah. yeah. Done teaching you. Yeah. Well, don't I'm don't done. do what I do. Yeah. He's done. Oh, how fun is that? <laughs> the moment oh, when you realize your dad's not nearly as awesome as you thought. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. That is so fantastic. I love it. And, and, and his daughter. If you want to ride a three wheeler, I forget how cool those things Dude, are. Dude, those yeah. things are hard. I've wiped out on one before. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, I can. Yeah. How? In the dumbest way. My, my stepdad uh, had one back when I was younger. So we went out uh, way out deep into like this area that had like a little bit of a gulch. And he was trying to teach me how to go down the gulch and come back up it. Like just to try to figure out how to do it. Well, I didn't get enough speed. So I, when I was coming back up, I didn't have enough to quite get up there. Ooh. And so I was stuck. And then it just slid slowly tipped over and rolled over on me. Oh. Yeah, it was like the dumbest slow-mo wreck ever. Oh. And I managed not to get hurt, but I uh, I messed up the handlebars on my step. Yeah, got well, you should see off. this video. He wrecked it. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, the thing's yeah. all cracked. Yeah, he's done. That I'm guy kind of looks like Rev, too, so I can oh, see you man. doing this. It must be the beard. Yeah. It's, you're you're, you're oh. screwing up the weight of your – the distribution yeah. of your weight on the on the three-wheeler. Rev, we need – Shave to, your beard. I would like to say that, yeah, but I was in like I was in like fifth grade. Oh, yeah. Like, I didn't have a beard yet. You he didn't have a beard in the fifth grade? No, no I didn't. That was Actually. sixth grade, Steve. He got it in sixth grade. No, yeah. it was. Yeah. I remember the pictures of you back then. You had a giant mullet. I yeah, did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Mm. I thought that would help with wind resistance. Yeah. Business in the front, roll over in the back. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, well you I'm got glad it. you survived that awful wreck that you had there, yeah. Rev. Yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Poor thing, man. The slow mo. It's just like, oh no, yeah. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> BJ and Migs, mornings on the Rock, ninety nine point nine KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Auto insurance is probably one of your larger expenses, so periodically take some time to see if it can be reduced. Check for discounts for paying in full versus monthly installments. Consider a higher deductible, improve your credit score, and lastly, don't be afraid to shop around. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmers' claim forgiveness means a claim won't increase your premium if you've been claim-free for five years. So your premium stays premium. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available select farmers' branded policies subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Well, here's a lovely headline. On Sunday, police in Thailand arrested a 24-year-old, 24-year-old guy... For stealing and having sex with over 100 pairs of flip-flops. Uh-oh. Yep. Loves, loves his ladies and thongs? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> At I least it know. weren't Crocs. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. No, Crocs, you just, they, they get around too much. He's not going to go with them. <laughs> yeah, he's not. But uh, you can at least understand with Crocs maybe how you might have. A little action with them. I'm, I'm not sure uh, how this worked yeah. with this guy. I mean, he, he stole 126 pairs of flip-flops from people's homes. Then he'd take him to his apartment. He would caress these flip-flops. He would kiss them, rub them all over his naked body. And, yes, eventually he would uh, have his way with them. He I'm, would make love. They posted a picture of all the flip-flops. <laughs> Whoa! And they're of all varieties. You got the ones with the thong kind of thing going on. You got the, the sliders. Yeah. You got them all, man. Yeah, he all sizes, all colors and styles. This <laughs> yeah. man liked the variety. Yeah, he, he really, really did. I mean, yeah, he didn't have one type. Here's the thing. He was Different arrested. Colors. He was arrested for this last year. So they, but what they didn't know was what he was doing with the flip flops. They just knew that he was stealing them. Last year he gets arrested for it. Then of course they find out again this year that he's stealing them. But then they find out why. And Did they catch him into that. Ooh, the story does not say that. But I mean, how else would they know? I think they call uh, it the flip flop. The flip flop fetish. Yeah. Uh, multiple charges of theft, obviously. Uh, also, he's in, he's in trouble for breaking his local coronavirus curfew. Mm. And I got to be thinking, man. I mean, if you are flops weren't wearing masks, yeah. <laughs> Plus, if you're, uh, you know, if you're basically having a sort of like DNA roulette with all those, I'm just like, this guy's not very healthy. I just got it. I mean, because at first I'm like, oh, how did that happen? And I think I'm like, oh yeah, I'm in, uh, no different than probably a lot of people. I have a pair of flip flops outside of our back area, so when you know, I take Lulu out. And I got to go pick up the poops or whatever. I don't have to like go into the garage, get some shoes. There's always a pair of sliders in our back nook. 
So I could just like instantly pop them oh, on. Oh, so that's how he's getting them because people I wouldn't be leaving surprised. them outside like you are. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, it just flip flops. You know, who wants just, them? Better check your shoes, Steve. Yeah, you know, I don't have to keep my. Thankfully, they're they're sliders, and I have socks on typically. So, you know, at least I have a little protection. Socks and sandals, really? Well, now well, you know, I'm not like going out like on for a walk. <laughs> it's just like I pick up some dung. Well, wait, wait. First of all, if you're wearing socks and sandals, it's not like you're weird here. And maybe other places might call you weird, but yeah. that's normal here. People do that all the time. No, if I was going out for a walk, I wouldn't put socks on. I'm not a socks and sandals kind of guy. I'm insulted that Red would even try and accuse me. Oh, of being wow. Weird. I don't know, man. I think you fit right in. I feel like after all the years, you've finally blended. Yeah, dad yeah. mode, man. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. You've finally blended, my I friend. do have my cargo shorts. All right, you're ready. I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> This is a really fascinating thing uh, about people and names this because there's a new profile in GQ and it turns out we've been saying Steve Buscemi's last name wrong all these years uh, and I said it wrong so you'd know who I'm talking about. His name, I guess, is Buscemi, which huh. is which. By the way, there was an artist that did comics for the uh, uh, a group, a book that I used to do for Marvel Comics. Uh, I used to like a lot, and I always used to call him John Buscemi. But then I thought, oh, I guess I was saying his name wrong all this time. Because that's how I knew how to say it. But then when you know Steve came out, I'm like, all right, well, I guess it's not Buscemi. I bet it's Buscemi. Turns out it is Buscemi. Well, and sometimes like situations, you know, like I think about like my last name. It's pronounced the way people pronounce it. There's if if you're from Italy, the G's are silent. Oh, definitely, like Pagliacci's. Right, but like when my grandfather came over from Italy and, and moved to America, he thought it would make it more American if he made the G hard. Oh, like Pagliacci's. Right. Ah. So technically, we're pronouncing our name wrong, but that's the way that our grandparents decided to make the name sound. What I love, though, is that a guy at some point told somebody his name, Mm -hmm. because, I mean, when he started acting, I'm Steve Buscemi, and nobody cared and just started calling him Buscemi. It's like Gif and Jif. Nobody cared what the original creator of the name wanted it to be called. They just started doing that and calling Buscemi. Well, and also because I, in, and on this interview clip, he talks about how, like, you know, it, technically there's – he's not even pronouncing it the proper way, I guess. I introduced you as Buscemi. Because of my extensive research, I learned that that's how you pronounce your last name. That's true. Even though everyone else in the entire world pronounces it Buscemi. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. What do you want it to be? Well, I can't. I can't say Buscemi because I didn't grow up that way. Right. Um, have you just given up on correcting people, or have you- I, well, I don't correct, correct people if they say Buscemi because it's not wrong. Yeah. So who am I to say that you're wrong? Because in fact, in, in Italy, in Sicily, where your family's from, Buscemi. Buscemi. So, so we're all getting it wrong. Yeah. Buscemi. Yeah. 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 So he pronounces his own last name wrong, but that's just the way he pronounces it. Oh, Buscemi. So that probably is why so many, you know what, I and the, and the artist that, from Marvel Comics, maybe he was Buscemi after all. Right. Be, be, I, it's, who knows? You see, it's so funny. I heard the same thing about Rihanna because somebody asked her, you know, your name is Rihanna. You, that's what you've always been. She goes, yeah. And they go, well, how did they start calling you Rihanna if you call yourself Rihanna? She goes, I have no idea. It's like that even wrestling dude is a wrestler by the name of Tommaso Ciampa. And he even has it on his Twitter it's, it's, it's like the pronunciation, it's Champa, but everyone says because the way it's spelled, it looks like it's Champa, C H I A M P A. Even announcers, everyone pronounces it Champa, even though he's made it a point to be like, no, it's Champa. And I think he probably just got to the point where he doesn't even correct people. I lived in the town I grew up in in Massachusetts, and I have never heard of this phenomenon ever that it, you go outside of our county. In the, in the state, and it's not a big county, and nobody pronounces the name of our town the way we do. It is mm-hmm. it like, it was the weirdest thing. Like, we would watch the local news, you know, say like you're watching Q13 or you're watching, you know, King 5. You've never heard anybody on those local stations pronounce anybody's town wrong from the state that they're in. They just, they know how to pronounce their own names of their own towns. And yet in my, in my, in Massachusetts, they would always call it Tewksbury. Like I to it, like, you know, like, gotcha. yeah. yeah, is it like it's a toque you wear on your head? And it was Tewksbury. And so I was like, I don't understand it. I live, how do you people not know this? I mean, we're, we're in the same state. It's not like you just moved here and so everybody, funny. yeah. And I've never had that phenomenon in any place I've lived all across the country where somebody pronounced somebody else's town that was like basically next to their town wrong, you know, and, and, and nobody, every, so over there in Tewksbury and I go, why did you decide to call it that? Nobody in my town calls it that. 
I get it 100 percent because everyone up here in Seattle pronounces my last name wrong. And the way that I it's pronounce just v, it. It's V, though. It's V. Yeah, just Danny V. No, uh, it's V Hill is the way that we say it in New Mexico. But it has a hard – it has a G in it. So everyone up here automatically thinks it's Vigil. Uh-huh. Well, and, and I and, just don't correct anyone because yeah. it's just it's. I mean, I don't like to have the conversation. Well, no, it's V Hill. Uh, well, what do you mean it's V Hill? There's no H right, in yeah. it, and it's like okay, just call me. Which is you funny because yours has an H. My G is, is like an L <laughs> when it's yeah. pronounced properly. Yep. It's just so funny how things are. I do. I've gotten to a point now. My wife laughs at me whenever we go anywhere and they look at they. Everyone always wants to try and pronounce it because it's a long last name. It's Migliori, which is why ever since I was a kid I was called Migs because teachers couldn't pronounce it properly. Because they'd be like, Migliore, Miglior, and it's just like... Yeah, just call me Migs. Dude, at this point now, though, my <laughs> wife cracks up. We'll go somewhere, and they'll look at the credit card, and it's like always like a fun game for whoever it is. And they just look, and they attempt, and I go, you got it. And they butchered it. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> nailed it. Every, I don't care how you pronounce it. Oh, that's nice. And my wife's like, why, why don't you just correct them? I'm like, it's a lot easier just to say yes, make them feel good for a second, than me having to go back and forth like Danny and trying to, like, Migli. Or e. it's like, yeah, you got it. Make I, don't know. I think I paid. It. I think I pay to see you do that every time. <laughs> that would be hilarious. See, got it. Nailed it. I'm the opposite. I, uh, my real last name, a lot. I used to pronounce it incorrectly until I had a counselor at school ask me. She's like, is that really how you pronounce it? I'm like, no, I just Americanized it so other people can pronounce it. She's like, don't do that because you're why are you erasing part of your heritage? And so I just politely tell people like the correct pronunciation because it has a double L and in Spanish it's called an Eye. So, you know. Like, oh, you, so, I, I should, so I should be calling you a Cholie? Yes. Instead of the, the yes, what I call you? Yes. Okay. But it's. it's, it's, it's you just got that Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it's, it's important to me. For sure, but I don't condemn anybody. Who, I'm glad you got it, though, Steve. Yeah. It took a minute. <laughs> it did take a minute. It took like five seconds. Yeah. Cut me some slack. I wasn't sure anybody was going to get it. I was hoping you would. Yeah. I'm just yeah. used to you calling me that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a, it's a lovely name. And now I'm pronouncing it correctly now. Yes, thank yeah. you. Look at uh, that. Yeah, I show. Yeah. Um, yeah. Danny, there is a word, though, that is your name. That's the thing. We host, vi- we have vigils all the time. Yeah. So it didn't even occur to me that there was a different pronunciation. I or even it was that Vigil. We- no, sure. yeah. Yeah. And I be, and I bet I wonder if in fact we stole that na- that word from you know from from Spanish because of the fact you know Ameri- I, mean, I, I mean English language steals from everybody. Yeah. Well, and that was Rev's point too. He was like, I thought you had the coolest superhero name when you moved. I here. did Daniel Vigilante, and it was like, no. no At least know. he corrected me. Yeah. yeah. I but still see, felt like an idiot. That's when I still cared. At this point, it's just like I'm not. <laughs> you corrected me too, though, Danny. That was really sad. I was like, oh, I, all these years, like I was so proud that I did know what your last name was, just didn't pronounce it. Well, right. In New Mexico, it's a really common name, so you don't have to correct anyone. But then oh. moving up here, it was like, oh, you have to correct everyone. And at that point, I was like, I'm just done. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> well, imagine though, like we were watching the Titan Games that uh, that it's basically American Glad- like Gladiators hosted by The Rock. Of course, you're watching it, right? And there was one of the competitors. Her last name was Seaman, and it was just like, <laughs> yep. I think I'd be like, no, my name is Semen or yeah. something. Oh, I know that's hard, right? As it were, yeah, that's really. Salmon. Yeah. And I'm just like a 14-year-old at, when they're doing the play-by-play. And they're like, oh, unfortunately, Seaman didn't have it in her. And it's like, what the yeah. hell? Okay, that's not right. <laughs> that is so not right. Is there? Is it around here? I don't know. I've lived somewhere where there was a Siemens furniture, and I thought, you got to change your name. I know the furniture name. I just don't know yeah. if it was around here either. But that's the other thing. It was just like, uh, well, there was Siemens furniture. And then in Rochester, New York, I don't understand why this guy wouldn't change his name to Richard. His, he, he was a Pontiac dealer, and his name was Dick-Eyed. And I'm just like, okay, who's going to buy a Dick-Eyed Pontiac? I don't think anybody. I mean, it's like, I mean. kind of would. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, I don't think you got to change your name. But, it, people, you know, I think he probably felt, you're going to remember who I am. I'm the guy that sells cars. I'm Dick-Eyed. And I'm just like, okay. I don't know this. I, don't, I, I need to listen to some Zach Brown. I didn't know that he has a song where he talks about Spokane, but he refers to it as Spokane. In one of his songs, but that's because he was trying to rhyme it with the word cocaine. So <laughs> it's like, that's pretty awesome. Do you think he was trying to rhyme it with cocaine or really thought it was pronounced Spokane? Because I did for years. I didn't know it was Spokane. The lyric cocaine flame on my bloodstream sold my coat when I hit Spokane. Yeah, he. he I'm sorry. I'm not going to believe he was trying to rhyme it. You know, it's not like uh, Weezer. I don't know. It's not I like Weezer, Maria Biatch. I love the Spokane. <laughs> No, sorry. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'm with you, Steve. I, I, I think he's making an ex- like he's making an excuse for his ignorance. I will admit it. I always called it Spokane. 
Oh, and someone even brought up the point. I almost forgot about that. It was the best part of the Titans game show. The the person's like, yeah, her last name was Seaman, and her job, she was an OBGYN. They were like, I was dying last night watching the Titan games. I was like, yeah, that is like, it's almost like you were meant to have that job. I, you know what? I'm going to say this right now. What? I don't. I believe they wrote that. It's too good. No, they had footage of her working at the doctor's place. Well, I'm not saying she didn't work at the doctor's place. I bet that's not her name. You that's just that. too good to be true. Everything about that story is and, just awesome. And porn companies have lab coats. I mean, they can just give the costume away on that. This wasn't like a penthouse forum. No, but we're just, Jamie you know. Jamie Seaman. I, mean, is she, I want to look up Jamie Seaman and see if she really has a place somewhere because she should be on the internet. I feel like they, they made the that name for the off. Titan Games. Let's That's see, Jamie Seaman. <laughs> Turn off because it's really fin- it's a great story. <laughs> Dr. Jamie Seaman. Okay, she exists. Well, then you can't make this stuff up, and they didn't. Right. I say I'm suspicious. Whoa. That's Dr. Seaman? Damn. <laughs> She's very attractive. <laughs> wow. All right. That makes me... I'm sorry, but if you look like that and your name's Dr. Seaman, how do you expect any guy to have a chance? Well, you know what I'm saying? Side, There's the no chance. Is, you gotta I got to go walk around with a pillow if I'm going to meet Dr. Seaman who looks like that. She helps with fertility issues, too. So, I mean, like that's also like, you know, a guy has to go there to do something. Well, it's you like, don't need to get a book at that point, right? They don't even set you in a room. They can just let you stand next to her. We should be canceled. Wow. No, she's, <laughs> she's, a, she's got a name, but she's a gorgeous woman, and she's a fertility doctor. Yeah. I mean, li- that's perfect. <laughs> Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. What's the difference between filing for bankruptcy and credit counseling? Uh, credit counseling is a is a useful process in some circumstances, but it does show up on your credit. In fact, from a credit scoring standpoint, credit counseling shows up just like a bankruptcy, so it's going to affect your credit as negatively as filing bankruptcy. In credit counseling, the idea is, is that a credit counselor works with your creditors on your behalf to try to lower interest rates or work out payment plans with your creditors uh, to, to pay back your debt over time. Uh, in credit counseling, you almost always pay back 100% of the debt, sometimes at lower interest. And of course, some creditors will participate in that process and some won't. Uh, so you're usually left with kind of a mixed uh, result with credit counseling and of course, a high payment. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Many of us face a financial crisis at some time in our life, but who do we turn to for help? Promises to eliminate any portion of your debt or legitimate credit items should raise a red flag. A good place to start is the National Foundation for Credit Counselors, or NFCC. Visit nfcc.org. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit kiswcom BECU.